guys, what's up? Today we've got a prepper segment for you. Um, we're going to be talking about uh, radioactivity after a nuclear blast. Um, I was on Craigslist the other day and I picked up for 75 bucks, which is a heck of a buy, one of these uh, FEMA radiation kits. It's an old civil defense uh, V Victor 777-1 and uh, <clears throat> It's a pretty cool kit. Uh, I'll show that to you here in just a second. Um, every prepper should have one of these in their in their prep kit, without a doubt. Very very important. Uh, and uh, this includes a uh, Geiger counter, uh, what they call a survey meter, uh, which had some issues uh, when I uh, when I got it, and I fixed it. And I'll tell you how I fixed it. That's going to be the main topic of the video. But, uh, I'm also going to show you uh, the whole kit. Uh, first of all, I'll show you how I fix the uh, survey meter and then uh, uh, there'll be a second segment after that where I'll show you uh, uh, the entire kit and what it's about. So, uh, Anyhow, uh, the cool thing about these, really cool thing about these is they're old style uh, very renowned for uh, functionality and accuracy and again the cool thing is they're EMP proof. Uh, these don't have any integrated circuits, no computers, uh, they're just old style, they work because they're, they're just plain old hard old uh, technology. So being EMP proof, you can't go wrong. There's uh, dozens and dozens of uh, uh, current Geiger counters and, and measurement instruments for radiation on the market today. They're all computerized. They all have integrated circuits. Uh, they're fine, great, accurate. They really do a good job for today. But uh, if we find ourselves, uh, as we know, in a EMP situation uh, where a nuclear device has gone off and uh, has fried the electronics, uh, all that newfangled stuff is going to be out the window. It's not going to work unless you have it in a Faraday cage, of course. Uh, but uh, these will work no matter what. So we'll get into the video here and uh, we'll show you what I did to uh, repair the meter on my uh, survey meter and uh, just basically show you what the contents of the kit are so that uh, you can search for some of these or one of these, uh, the CDV. 777-1. Search for these and uh, see if you can pick one up for your go kit. Here we go. So when I picked up this uh, survey meter in my FEMA kit, it came with this survey meter and a Geiger counter and uh, uh, a few other assorted sundries. This particular meter, they say, is what you really need if there is a nuclear attack and if uh, fallout and radioactivity is a, a very imminent situation. This particular meter won't do anything uh, in a normal environment. Uh, it's what they call the uh, unexciting meter compared to the Geiger counter. The Geiger counter you can go around and you can take tests of uh, all kinds of things and the needle moves and the uh, audio clicks and uh, it's fun to use. But this one is the one that they say is the workhorse for telling you whether you have the potential of dying or not. The Geiger counter, anything it measures is not going to measure potential or lethal radiation. This will tell you if the needle moves on this one, you got to get out of there. I mean, it doesn't matter what setting it's on, uh, it's reading mega doses of radiation and uh, uh, it's serious when something happens to the needle on this particular one. It, uh, if it moves, you're in trouble. So anyhow, I got this, and uh, it uh, appeared to be non-functional. Uh, the circuit check was not functioning, and uh, I'll t show you just exactly what I'm talking about. When you get this warmed up, which it is, and uh, you zero it, you put it to zero, and you adjust the needle to zero, and then you go down here and, and uh, turn the knob to circuit check, and it goes up, and if it goes into the red there, it's considered working properly. Well, it wouldn't do that. 
I'd put it on circuit check and it'd go up to maybe one, one and a half and get stuck and I thought there was a problem with the circuitry and everything but I got online and I started uh, doing some research and the meter appears to be uh, the biggest issue with these things and that's what it was with this one, the meter. Uh, I was going to replace the meter and then I thought, you know, this thing hasn't been used for probably 50 years. So what I did as a fix for this, and uh, it might help you guys as well, uh, I just started, the, the when you set it to zero, I just started wiggling the zero knob and just working that meter because it hasn't moved for 50 years. And... Uh, for any great amount and I just kept working it and working it. I worked it for about a half an hour and uh, just got it worked in and now uh, <laughs> it works. It works just fine and that needle swings nicely and everything and uh, you get it back down to zero and then you do a battery check. Works just fine. So there was nothing wrong with the internals, the circuitry or anything. The meter was just showing inaccurately because it was sticking because it hadn't been used for so long. But then you go over to uh, uh, X100, X10, X1, and X01, and you get no reading at all. And that's exactly the way it should be. And there is nothing that you can legally own radioactivity-wise that's going to make this meter read anything. If it's potent enough radioactivity to make this meter move, uh, you're in trouble and you need to just get out of town. You need to get away from the source that's causing this needle to move. So. There you go. This is how I fixed mine. And uh, if, uh, if the meter is malfunctioning on yours, work it. Just keep working it. And uh, get that needle to move in nice and freely. Because, and it would stick. When I first started, it would stick. Uh, you know, it'd go, it'd go up to maybe two and two and a half and then stop. And I'd kind of wiggle it and then it'd go further up. And I just kept wiggling the knob, turning the knob and... and uh, <laughs> It's back to uh, brand spanking new status now. So you can zero it out again. And uh, whoops, that's uh, not for zero. That's on readings. But you go over here to zero. And uh, you know, it wiggles no matter where you put it. But uh, to zero it out to get a good reading, an accurate reading, you zero it out there. And then you turn it to the different settings. But like I say, it's not going to show anything. So there you go. That's how I fixed my defective meter and my uh, selective, what do they call it, select, select meter or something like that. There you go, guys. Hey, guys. I was cruising Craigslist uh, the other day, and I came across this uh, radiation detection set and uh, thought, I'd, uh, thought I'd purchase it. It was a very reasonable price, 75 bucks. And I've seen them for uh, $300 and over on, uh, on eBay. And uh, uh, this is a pretty nice one. And for a prepper, this is a great kit to have. It comes with a, uh, a Geiger counter. Uh, this doesn't have batteries in it right now, but I did, uh, I did check it and everything works good. It uh, comes with the uh, earphones for the Geiger counter. The earphones uh, attach right here. And you hear the click, 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 click like you do on TV. <laughs> and uh, uh, it got, it's got the uh, uh, counts per minute and the uh, Miller, -Raggins, Miller Raggins per hour. And uh, Miller Raggins, it's not very much in radiation. Uh, from what I understand, the Geiger counter is a great uh, thing to have if you're uh, checking uh, things and people that have been decontaminated uh, to see if there's uh, any residual radiation left. And uh, a lot of people call it the toy of the kit because it, uh, it does things. It actually, uh, you can measure radiation of uh, uh, 
all kinds of things and it actually registers on the meter and uh, uh, you can hear the clicking and stuff but as they say nothing that this meter will register will actually kill you uh, this meter uh, measures such low doses of radiation like background radiation and stuff that if you're in a, a, a major nuclear situation uh, anything that you're going to uh, uh, experience with a, uh, a thermonuclear device being detonated is going to overwhelm this thing uh, hands down so uh, like I say this this thing's good for uh, once things have been decontaminated if you've got uh, somebody that has been come in from uh, outside and and uh, have been washed off and decontaminated and then you can check them with this to make sure that the, uh, they're okay but uh, this is a fun thing to use and it uh, it uh, it does work works fine however the workhorse of this kit is the survey meter now this is not a Geiger counter this is a survey meter and uh, 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 this measures beta and gamma radiation uh, I think beta also for sure gamma radiation and there's no wand like this one there's a little tub in here that uh, 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 reads the radiation. The radiation goes right through the metal case and the metal uh, tub in there and it actually measures uh, radiation and this one will measure lethal radiation. Uh, that's basically what it's designed to do is measure lethal radiation whereas this one over here, the other one, uh, it's just uh, radiation that's uh, not lethal. But even on the very most sensitive position, uh, this thing will not register anything in any environment that we have at this point in time. I can't legally own any radioactivity material that will make this needle move. But this is the lifesaver of the kit. If you find that this needle is moving uh, after an event, then you need to do your best. It doesn't matter where these settings are. Uh, uh, even on the lowest, even on the most sensitive setting, if that needle, or even on the, especially the most uh, uh, attenuated setting, uh, then you're really in trouble. But even on the, the most sensitive setting over here, if that needle moves, you're, you've got some deadly radiation you've got to deal with, and you have to put as much distance between whatever is call, causing that radiation uh, as possible and as fast as possible. So. This is a pretty cool kit. Then it also comes with a uh, dosimeter. And that is these pins that uh, you carry around in your pocket. And uh, this has got a little scale on it inside. And uh, you zero it out to start with. Uh, you've got a, uh, a charging contact and that just comes off like that and you uh, plug this end into uh, into there and then you turn the knob and it zeroes this little hair, hairline over to the zero that's where you start out at and then you just put it in your pocket and carry it, carry it around with you all day and uh, uh, you can at any time during the day you want you can view into the magnifying glass and see the scale and it tells you uh, how much radiation you have accumulated uh, uh, throughout the, the uh, time that you're working around radiation. And when you're done, and, and it tells you if you're in danger, when you're done, you just take it back and zero it out again and, and uh, uh, you're, you're good to go. So. And, uh, and it comes with, uh, it came with manuals for everything. And also, this radiation safety in the shelters and it's a full uh, everything you wanted to know but were afraid to ask about what to do when uh, uh, a nuclear attack happens and how to work the meters and the, the whole ball of wax so for 75 bucks what a heck of a deal I uh, am pretty happy to have acquired that and everything seems to be fully functional um, they say that uh, uh, they need to be calibrated every uh, three or four years and uh, for 
total accuracy, that's true. But uh, in reality, uh, I mean, they've, they've been calibrated before, and they're probably off. But in reality, especially a survey meter, uh, it was calibrated before, and uh, it may be off, yes. But uh, if the needle's moving, it doesn't matter how accurate it is. You know you got to get out of town. So that's what a good prepper should have on hand. You, you made me.